Good afternoon, everyone. We're expecting some uh, really important news. I just want to welcome everybody here. Netflix will be reporting earnings. I have my levels already pre-planned. And we're going to talk about how we can exploit earnings season for maximum gains trading futures. This is very exciting because not a lot of people have really huge uh, accounts. So um, they cannot trade stocks. Therefore, you need to have $25,000 or more uh, to be able to day trade stocks. And uh, future seems a little bit more affordable. All right. So let's begin, everybody. Uh, first off, I just, uh, well, Netflix is uh, due to report earnings in just a few moments right now, four o'clock. So what I'm going to do is I am going to shift my screen and I hope you guys can see it here. Uh, we're going to begin with the practical side because we have earnings. So we want to make sure that, you know, we capture everything and then we're going to get to the slides and how to do it and uh, what it means. All right, Eric, who is reporting earnings? Netflix is reporting earnings. And here we have two charts side by side. We have NASDAQ futures and we have Netflix. And both of these charts are daily charts. And as you can see, we have some pre-plant levels right here. First of all, we have a massive bullish above level uh, that is just above uh, 20,180 uh, in NASDAQ futures. And we have a really big bullish above level in um, uh, Netflix that is just above 658. We also have some bearish below levels. The bearish below levels in Netflix are 635. And the bearish below level in NASDAQ is going to be uh, just uh, below 19,670 to 650 level. Uh, notice that NASDAQ is sitting on support. And we have the same type of support uh, in uh, Netflix. Uh, this is minor support. Minor support is always present only in massive uptrends. So therefore, these uh, two charts, Netflix uh, and the stock Netflix and the futures index uh, uh, NASDAQ are both in massive, massive uptrends. So as we're awaiting, so I think it'll, it'll make more sense to wait for Netflix earnings to do it live. And then we're gonna get to slides. I just wanna welcome everybody. Hi everybody. Um, my name is Anka Metcalf. Uh, and until the earnings are out, just a little bit about myself. I'm a professional independent trader that is focused on trading uh, uh, stocks and futures for the last uh, 22 years. And I come with 10 plus years in investment banking. So prior to becoming a professional independent trader, I have been working in the financial field as well. Uh, I'm the CEO, CEO and founder of TradeOutLoud.com, which is a trading education company that is specialized in educating individuals how to day trade, swing trade, and invest in any market, whether it's a stock market, whether you want to trade futures, generate income, et cetera. Uh, I run two services that have been a tremendous success since I opened the doors for Trade Out Loud in 2010. I run a swing trading service for stocks and ETF. uh, ETFs. I have helped uh, tons of investors in 2008 and 2009 pro bono. And uh, my time is really valuable. So I thought, you know what? I should create my own business. Uh, helping people uh, understand the concepts behind the market moves. I also run a, a trading room for futures since 2017 and has uh, been super popular. It's actually one of our uh, extremely popular programs because people are oriented towards generating income even more than generating wealth. And uh, also, I do, we do offer education for swing trading and day trading. I specialize in high velocity moves. So what that means is that I look for inflection points into the market that can point us uh, towards a better risk to reward ratio. And not only that, but for a maximum follow through um, room to the next target. I typically take from one to three trades a day. And uh, rarely that I 
take more than that. But uh, yesterday was an exception. I think I took like six or seven trades uh, yesterday. Um, also, I'm the designer of an institutional proprietary trading system that is based on price support resistance. And I do specialize in eight layers of price support resistance that we analyze before getting into each trade. So we look for confluence levels without uh, multi uh, time frame analysis. And uh, I also pay very close attention to specific trigger times, especially when day trading, uh, specific price zones at which uh, the price is at. Um, and of course, these uh, locations are key to determining our entries, our stops, our targets, and velocity, that potential follow-through, immediate follow-through. Uh, when I get in a trade, I don't like to get in a trade for two points or three points, or as you know, a lot of the futures traders um, refer to as four ticks, eight ticks. No, I don't even consider the tick. I go for the whole point. And the more, the better. And uh, I would rather take few trades in the day than um, eight trades or 20 trades in the day. Um, I'm not I, I'm not a big fan of scalping because I haven't found a really amazing, successful trader just scalping his whole entire life into wealth. <laughs> so uh, I can teach you how to generate income in two hours or less every single day. And with that, to start generating your uh, wealth and start creating your own wealth ecosystem. So as we're waiting right now for the earnings results. Um, okay, let's see. I'm, I have my eyes. All right. So earnings are out. All right. Uh, Netflix just reported earnings. All right. Let me see. Are these rumors or? Okay. We're going to go now to the five minute charts. All right. Here we go. It reported earnings. I'm going to tell you what is happening right now uh, and how we can pre-plan for tomorrow session or even for the overnight session. So you don't have to do it right now, right? So we're not trading Netflix. We're trading the reaction of Netflix. All right. So these are the earnings results for those of you that understand them and, you know, want to see what the results are. So Netflix earnings per share 4.88 versus 4.75 per share. Um, okay, then revenue 9.56 billion versus 9.53 billion expected, and total memberships 274.4 million paid membership the memberships expected according to street account. All right, so the numbers are out. So what we're going to be doing right now is we're actually going to be waiting for about five to five to ten minutes, but we're not going to be waiting ten minutes. We're actually going to be waiting even less than five minutes. And we're going to go ahead and uh, start pre-planning for tonight's session and also for uh, the uh, um, uh, tomorrow session. That is so important. OK. All right. So with that being said, now that we have the results up, uh, we have some levels are here. So um, earnings uh, are not that bad right now for from Netflix. We don't see a lot of participation. We see the earnings uh, first uh, earnings reaction bar, which uh, tapped a little bit into the bullish above. You could see that because of the positive results, it went through the moderate uh, bullish uh, above level. Uh, right here is just uh, testing that, but this is the actual bullish above level that we want to do it. And as you can see right here, it just tapped into it. So uh, the next momentum in Netflix, if it takes out this level right here that we have marked, and please keep in mind that these levers are not linear. So it doesn't mean that 657.42 is that exact price for the bullish above, it is the area above it. So anything that trades above that 667, 660 in, uh, for example, if you want to take a little bit of a cushion, uh, that is going to be the bullish above. Uh, so this is what we are going to be looking for. And bottom line is that we want to see this price that you guys see here within the bullish above and the bearish below. So this doesn't mean that we're going to be trading um, uh, Netflix. Again, uh, the reason why we have Netflix right here, and this is a futurist webinar, is because we want to trade it through NASDAQ. And as you can see, NASDAQ will become bullish above 
uh, over 980 zone, right? Keep it in mind that 220,000 uh, is going to be a big catalyst. So ideally, the bullish above level is 980. However, we want to see it uh, pinch just above 20,000. And this is going to allow it uh, to enter in and escalate into a tradable void uh, into the next target, which is confluence very close to the 20,200. And this is literally live pre-planning of how we can take a look at the market and say, hey, is NASDAQ going to be bullish over on, in the overnight? And at the end of the session, we're going to take, a uh, again, a quick look at Netflix and NASDAQ so we can better understand uh, how the price action is likely to react in the overnight trading session and if these parameters are going to remain intact or if we need to pre plot different levels. But as of right now, the way I'm seeing it, I think the lower levels are key and are fabulous. And we should start seeing uh, some kind of activity either above or below. So very positive for that. All right. So now we're going to begin our presentation for today where I'm going to teach you how to do all this. And it's not super complicated. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that you guys are going to enjoy tonight's webinar. We have a full house tonight. I was afraid that we're not going to have a lot of people in because there are some other major events uh, with, with webinars that are happening right now. But I'm really happy that we have a full house tonight. So keep in mind that all information provided today by us is for educational purpose only and should not be construed as investment advice regarding the purchase or sale of securities, options, futures, forex, or any instrument of any kind. And I'm pretty sure you know by now that trading involves a really high level of risk and may not be suitable for all investors because you lose money, right? Okay, so you know the drill. So what we're talking about here is fast trades with awesome results. Now, the favorite type of trades that I absolutely love and adore and play these levels on uh, are the ones that um, literally uh, report before the market open. They are going to have a super high impact into the market. So, for example, I'm just going to uh, tune it uh, in, ju in just two minutes. Uh, to a trade that has impacted an index on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and it made a massive impact on it. So fast trades, um, awesome results, and how to use futures, um, uh, futures uh, um, on indices like uh, the, uh, so how to use stocks on indices like the S&P 500, NASDAQ, Dow, to bet on the overall market direction influenced by a series of earnings reports. This is what this presentation is all about. So futures indices will have a reaction on specific stock earnings report. Now, are all the stocks going to impact the indices? The answer is no. And we're going to take a look and see which uh, stocks are likely to impact these indices most. So first of all, we're going to talk about earnings season. What to expect from earnings season? Gaps. We're going to talk a little bit about gaps. An introduction to futurists for those of you that are new or coming from stock trading and how to create a game plan for actually Q3 of 2024 earnings season and how to pre-plan entry stops, targets using technical analysis and how to trade stocks versus futures. Uh, futures in minis. Uh, and also micros, because now you have access to micros, which is 10 of the size of a full size contract, which enables you to handle a lot uh, just by using a micro. So instead of NASDAQ, right, you have a small account, you're going to be trading it through uh, micros. And the best time to, to be executing these trades, right? Because first you need to watch the reaction, pre-plan, and then when the volume is coming back into the futures market, then you can actually take decisions. So... Let's begin with earnings season, right? So earnings season has just started uh, and it definitely started last Friday when JP Morgan, Citi and um, um, Wells Fargo uh, were the first financials that reported, right? So uh, within this season that is happening every single quarter and the season that basically lasts not three months, well, theoretically it's three months, but practically, it's only about six weeks because after those six weeks, the momentum slows down and the market is going to have a slope, right? So what we're looking at is basically playing the full force of the first six weeks of heavy duty market players. 
within this period of time, we're going to be expecting more market moves. So we're going to expect big moves to the upside, big moves to the downside. The market is not going to be sideways. Uh, we're going to expect velocity. Velocity is the capability of price of traveling fast into target. Uh, we're going to expect follow through. So that means that once you have your entry set, you're not going to be waiting two weeks until you achieve target. Or if you're a day trader, you're not going to be waiting, let's say, four hours to get the price into target. It's going to happen super fast. And usually all these moves are happening in the power hour in the morning in the first hour. You're going to see the return of volatility. Volatility is going to be wild. In fact, you could see that throughout this week, the volatility has been incredibly, incredibly high. Not only that, but the volume has been high as well. So remember the adage, sell and man go away? Yeah, me too. Guys, it doesn't apply. That was your grandfather's market. Today, you're having a market that is dominated by algorithms. So therefore, they're trading. They're, they have the most presence in the market. Algorithmic trading accounts for more than 90% of the market volume. 10% is retail traders and some other hedge funds and some other institutional traders. But that's it. So bottom line is that we're trading with the machines. Now, as you guys know, bigger price swings potentially can mean bigger profits. And for the astute trader, that equivalence, that is the equivalent to making more money. Therefore, less time spent into the market because we're going to be focusing on the power hour and we're going to be doing the game plan for either tonight for those of you guys that, you know, for example, don't trade the morning because you have full-time jobs and you have to be somewhere in the morning or you have to run errands or whatever the case may be, but you can still take advantage of some price swings that are happening in the overnight. Now I'm going to show you how to do that as well into this presentation. Um, so that means that, uh, you know, you're going to be taking advantage of the institutional power push, whether it's going to be up or down. Earnings don't have to be good, don't have to be, you know, bad uh, for you to make money in the market. And because we're day traders or swing traders, we don't care in which direction the market moves. We just want to have an identifiable momentum move. So we just need to see what the trend is and we get in. We don't have a preference. And I can't say that I love going long or I love going short. I go with the flow of the market. All right, so earnings season is the period of time during which a number of large um, large, large uh, publicly traded companies release their quarterly earnings reports. We have the first quarter and second quarter, the third quarter, and the fourth quarter. And basically right now, we're, we're releasing the second quarter earnings. So whatever the companies um, uh, accomplished within, uh, within the last quarter, the second quarter, this is what they're reporting right now. Quarterly earnings report is one of the few times during the year when the company is required to report its progress. Analysts, investors, and media awaits to report, uh, awaits the report with bad breath to see how the progress is going. Can you guys imagine when Google, Microsoft, Amazon, and typically all the and um, all these companies, these three companies, actually there, uh, there, there may be more this uh, this time around are going to report in the same day. That is a massive powerhouse. Think think about the billions. Uh, think about the billions and billions and billions of dollars that are going to be at stake. It's all about expectation. When you're talking about earnings season, you're talking about expectations. Small companies can see a 20% move in either direction. How wild is that? Because we're talking about moves that are happening potentially in a day or two. So we're not talking about a week or, you know, like in swing trading, it's normal to have uh, for example, cycles in which the price goes up 20 to 30 percent and then it pulls back. No, you were talking about immediate reaction. And, and that is when they report. 
okay, when they report. Uh, at times, a small company will have a blow-up quarter and the stock will plateau or just go down just because the market's expectations were too high. Now, pay attention to what uh, day the company reports earnings and the time that it reports earnings. So if you're focused on this particular strategy, uh, then you have to be very careful and, you know, do a little bit of um, investigation and see uh, when is the company reporting uh, the uh, uh, timing that it's going to report. Uh, what were the prior three earnings reports out? And we're going to give you uh, some clues for that on how to find that out uh, very easily by using some of uh, software that I use and I love it. So basically, you're going to see a lot of things. You, you need to do a little bit of homework for that. But this homework that takes no more than, I don't know, maybe three minutes, uh, maybe not even three minutes, um, is really going to put a um, big impact in your account and money in your pocket if you're trading, uh, if you're trading futures. Okay, so company earnings are released before the market opens or after the market closes and never during the trading day and often causing a substantial price move in the underlying stock outside of trade, uh, regular trading hours. So right now, you may not see activity in the futures uh, market, right? Because the market is closed. We're just going to reopen at six o'clock. Uh, but you may see activity, for example, in the stock, right? Because the stock is still going to be trading. Some stocks are going to be trading until um, 7 o'clock at night. Some of them may be trading overnight as well, depending on uh, what stock is reporting. The largest reactions typically occur when a company substantially exceeds or misses expectation. If it's like in line with it, you're not going to have like a massive reaction, right? And you can see here from this example from Netflix that I showed before that it's kind of like, you know, in that median line. So having access to extended hours trading will allow future traders to react quickly because you can determine pre-plot for um, my favorite time to look at charts at night, which is around 9 p.m. So for example, uh, you can capture really big moves uh, in NASDAQ from reports from the market. Like, let's say when Amazon, Google, Netflix, Apple, uh, Meta or Boeing are going to report or not Boeing, but uh, when they're going to uh, when um, tech stocks are going to report. Right. Boeing is going to have a big impact on price when um, um, when it's going to report. And definitely that's going to be for what? for the Dow, because it's part of the Dow. Why do you think the Dow and fin financials have been moving so high, right? Right following the earnings. I'm going to give you an example um, in a second. In fact, we could actually take a look at the chart right now. Um, and um, uh, you could see the reaction. Let me just take this to the daily chart so you can see uh, clearly what we're talking about. So for example, here, we're going to have the futures uh, index. We're going to have the Dow. And here, uh, let's pick, for example, JP Morgan, right? So JP Morgan had reported earnings on Friday, right? So Friday was the 12th. Uh, this is the earnings report that came out. And look at this, one, two, three extension to the upside. Let's take a look here at 12. You can see the 12. You can see the volatility um, uh, started to come in. Uh, judging by the topping tails that we're getting, the, the wicks that we're getting, the extended wicks. And here's the continuity. You have one, two, three, four bars to the upside, right? So this is the type of action. So now that you know that, for example, at the beginning of earnings season, you need to focus more on what is reporting uh, rather than what it's not reporting. So I like to shift my attention. For example, today I traded, I, I just traded, uh, I just traded, um, for example, the Dow because the Dow was still a little bit more bullish and had a new high here. So that's why. Uh, also, you're going to see that companies like UNH that I think it reported on Monday. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, UNH is also a big part of uh, uh, of the Dow, right? It's one of the heavyest weights, uh, heavy heavyweight uh, companies in the Dow. 
You can see here that it reported right here on the 15th, and here's the traction that it had two days. You can see the maximum two days up in the Dow as well. So you're gonna have a peekaboo um, idea. You're gonna have like this peekaboo insight into what is happening into the market. And this is so what's so cool about it because you're keeping an eye on the pulse of the market. So this is gonna give you an edge when you're trading. Uh, I don't, I mean, I haven't met a trader that actually does this. I have always done this. And this is because I come from the stock trading background. So traders that, if you hear that there are traders, oh my God, I was at the floor at the CME and I was doing this and I was doing that. They're the worst traders, money makers, traders are on the floor. They were the worst, they are the worst traders. And they're the traders that blew accounts after accounts after accounts. Now, what I'm trying to say is that when you have an edge into the market and typically uh, uh, people that and traders that have experience in the stock market that uh, extend their knowledge into the futures market have a lot more understanding about the market in general. So the bottom line is that when you decide to trade, for example, only just futures, don't think that you're not going to have anything to do with stocks because stocks are primarily what is going to impact the price into the futures market, that and economic releases, okay? So basically, you're going to have to create the framework. So this is an economic calendar. Uh, you could just go to the economic calendar of your choice. You could have a Google economic calendar where you can find it. You can find a market watch, Yahoo, et cetera, wherever you want to get it. Uh, and take a look at specific stocks through the calendar that have the capability to move the markets. And if you don't know how to identify stocks that are moving the market, go by market cap. This, These are the companies that are going to primarily uh, impact the market so much. So this today, today, uh, today's Wednesday after the close, you saw that Netflix reported earnings. And therefore, this is basically the only biggest company here uh, that is going to impact the market. Now, Here's a thought. Tomorrow, American Express is going to report earnings. American Express, just like Goldman Sachs, Bank of America, just like Wells Fargo, uh, just like JP Morgan, had a tremendous run to the upside. Did they pull back? Yeah, they pulled back because these are the market conditions right now, right? The market is going through a lot of uncertainty on the political side and on the economic side. So uh, tomorrow, watch very closely because this is the biggest company within this whole entire um, day. Uh, it's going to report before the market. And if American Express is going to have positive earnings, uh, then you're going to see positive uh, positivity within the uh, the Dow once again. Also, notice that uh, Fifth Third Bank is reporting as well. Comerica is reporting Huntington. So you have a bunch of regional banks that are reporting. And these earnings reports, if they're going to be online, in line with American Express, which is the bigger company, and if the regionals are going to participate with these mega banks and mega institutions, financial institutions, then the momentum may be higher for what? Can I hear it right here for what index? For the Dow, right? Because these are part of the Dow. Now, this is the earnings report calendar. And I was saying that the first six weeks are essential. The big money is being made within this six weeks. And this is when I push the pedal to the metal. The rest, I'm going to find some, you know, uh, nice plays. I'm going to be a little bit more conservative. Uh, after this period of time, we're easing out of earnings season. We're going to try to find some specialty trades. Uh, we have a different plan of, uh, that we're going to be deploying when earnings season gets super slow. But when the earnings season gets heavy, and by the way, we're here right now, right? This is where we're here. Just 70% of the companies are going to report. So think about next week. Next week is going to be super important. But the week after that, oh my God, this is the the biggest companies are going to report and the most companies are going to report, right? So this is where you want to be trading and pulling, the, uh, push the pedal to the metal. And this is where you want to pay attention to earnings, right? And it's not a big deal. You just have to watch you know, earnings and see how they perform. That's it. That's it. You don't need to understand the numbers. Is it a, uh, is it a miss or is it, you know, um, above estimate, uh, above the estimated uh, uh, number? 
So as you can see from two weeks from now, things are going to go a little bit more downhill. This is still week four. It's still going to be super powerful. But after that, we're going to go like slow, uh, lower and lower. Uh, beat. That's the word. Thanks so much, Ben. All right. So, um, you know, then we go lower and lower and lower. And bottom line is that week eight. And notice that these this, uh, this only represents literally two months. So the last month is going to be full of events. And this is what we're talking about September. And September is, in general, a very difficult month to trade. It's one of the most difficult months to trade in the year. Uh, but always the end of the quarter, the last month of the quarter, is a little bit more special and it's a little bit more difficult. First of all, you have the contract rolls uh, that are happening um, about a week before the uh, option expiration and it's a quadruple witch option expiration which is a little bit more difficult because you're going to see a lot of things uh, that are going to happen uh, and just because we talked about option expiration think about this we have option expiration tomorrow so if you're seeing a roller coaster market this week is characterized every single time by a big move up a big move down and a lot of sideways action we haven't seen those side sideways action but we may see it tomorrow um, but we'll see, we'll see how that's going to go, but keep in mind, option expiration is very difficult for day traders, for swing traders as well. So how many of you guys in here are familiar with gaps in trading in stocks gaps? Do you guys know what a gap is? Gap, gap, gap right? A gap is occurring when the price is closing at a certain level, let's say today, right? And it's opening at a different level level tomorrow morning, whether up or down. And you're going to see the difference between the uh, the close and the open. If if the open is higher than the close, there that's going to generate a uh, that's going to generate a cap a gap. As a stock trader, I love gaps because I love to actively you know trade gaps, and I definitely love. Uh, you know, to swing trade, and I pay very close attention uh, to these gaps. When I was a day trader, I used to be uh, for many, many years, for more than 20 years, a stock day trader. And that's where I gained tons of experience trading stocks. And uh, bottom line is that uh, you're going to get an edge when you do that. So even if you're a futures trader, but if you decide to take a second look at stocks a little bit, uh, just to see performance, you know, to see gaps, to understand a little bit the concept, you're going to have a much better edge in the futures market. All right. And in the futures market, I landed by accident uh, because it was my counter that suggested that, that I look in the futures market because I was paying tons and tons and tons of commissions and fees uh, and taxes uh, trading uh, stocks. So she suggested, you know what, uh, why don't you take a look at futures because it's going to be a lot better uh, from the taxation standpoint and from, you know, everything else. So that is when I made the switch. And it happened about 10 years ago. So uh, I applied and it I went gradual into day trading uh, futures. In fact, uh, you know, I would say that uh, 2000 and uh, 2014 to 2015 at the beginning, you know, I, you know, gained my mojo into day trading uh, futures. And then I was day trading futures. A lot of my friends, I abandoned a lot of my friends that were day trading uh, <laughs> our day trading stocks. And they were like, what are you doing? I'm like, no, I'm done, not day trading stocks anymore. I'm day trading futures. But like I said, it was a gradual process. It wasn't just, uh, you know, just, okay, I'm just trading futures from now on. I still love stocks very much because I swing trade and I invest in stocks so uh, uh, almost every day. So uh, let's talk about futures because for those of you that are here and uh, for those of you that are coming from a stock trading background, there are some things that you need to know about the futures market. You can uh, use a, your capital a lot more efficiently than you are using it into the stock market. Well, first of all, you have access to leverage. The leverage available in the futures uh, trading uh, allows you to utilize your capital more efficiently. So for example, if you have $200,000 and you want to speculate on direction of the S&P 500 for the purpose of this example right here, you have three choices. Number one is cash. You buy $200,000 worth of the stock using all your available cash. Your exposure 
to, for example, and you're going to buy spice, right? The ETF, the spice. And therefore, um, you're going to have an exposure of $200,000. The second choice is to use leverage. Now, if you're a swing trader, you have two to one leverage. If you're a day trader, you're pretty much going to get a four to one leverage in equities. So let's say the two to one leverage, let's say you're a swing trader, you get two to one leverage, um, then guess what? You're going to act, you're going to be utilizing only a hundred thousand dollars of your capital, right? Because you're accessing only half. So that becomes a lot more affordable. Now, when you're doing futures, when you're trading futures, uh, you're basically uh, trading futures on margin. Um, and you're taking advantage of the 10 to 1 leverage. So basically what this does, and remember you're starting off at $200,000 because of the 10 to 1 leverage, you're going to be utilizing only $20,000 of your capital. So it's a lot more affordable. Now, what is a futures contract? Because a lot of you guys are very new and are coming, uh, you know, to the futures market, you know, without, you know, without knowing a lot about futures. Uh, a futures contract is an agreement to buy or sell a predetermined amount of a um, commodity or financial instrument at a certain price on a stipulated date. Similar to trading options, but future, futures contracts have an expiration date where the contract will expire and stop trading, but uh, it's not going to expire worthless. So most futures traders roll their futures positions prior to the expiration to uh, to avoid delivery. Um, and more on that later. We're gonna we can talk about that. But bottom line is, for example, oil, right? So oil already uh, uh, is trading into the August contract, right? So oil right now. Uh, has already rolled. However, the old contract still has four days of trading. Basically, now at the end of the day, only three days left of trading. So that means that within these three days, you have the option to either close your position, reevaluate it, let's say later in the week or next week or the following week or in five weeks right now, and you could decide to get back in if you want, long or short. Or if you decide to say, hey, you know what? I have an active position. I want now to be, still be in this trade. Okay, my conviction remains the same. What you do is you roll. Basically, the roll sounds a little bit sophisticated. Don't be intimidated by it. It's an order on your platform. So basically what you do is you click on the roll order and it's going to do it for you. So you click on the roll and it's going to roll you into the forward contract. What that order does, it closes your uh, prior order and it opens instantly a new order into the forward contract. You either want to do it manually, close your order and open the order again, or you want to do it through the rollover into your platform same thing tomato tomato so there are three the three most important thing elements of the contract are the size right the size of the contract the value of the contract and the tick size right uh, so now that we have full size contracts and we have uh micros available this becomes you know and this changes a lot now uh and traders that have uh that have Smaller account sizes can now participate into the market because they, the market, the futures market just became more affordable. And just so you know that through futures, you could trade gold, you could trade uh, silver, you can trade oil, you can trade Bitcoin. Not a lot of people know, but there is even a micro for Bitcoin, 10 the size of the full size contract. And there's Bitcoin futures, right? So if you don't want to go through the hassle of, you know, buying the original Bitcoin, or maybe you don't have the money to buy, you know, the bit Bitcoin itself, right? You could uh, go to futures, to a futures contract, and definitely do that. There are a lot of ways uh, you could buy an ETF, for example, like GBTC or whatever. So there are a lot of options instead of buying Bitcoin itself. But that's a topic for a different uh, for a different webinar. So a lot of people ask me why futures. Well, first of all, like I said, I've made this uh, the switch to futures for tax purposes. However, uh, shortly after I realized 
that is so much less work. It's actually, you know, like you have the leverage 10 to one, that's the, that's the work leverage 10 to one. So my workload was literally 10 times less because when I was day trading stocks, I had to get up very early. I had to look through the um, economic releases. I got a, I had to look through the earnings uh, reports and results. Uh, I had to analyze at least 20 to 30 stocks before I started my day. I had to look through my hot list from the day before to see if there are any continuation plays. I had to identify another at least 10 gap that I want to put on my list and see which ones I needed to trade. Uh, so there was a lot more work involved. Now, I only look at the futures indices basically in the morning. Um, for gold and oil, I do trade them. For example, this week I traded oil for, uh, you know, for a little bit of profit. So I had a trade in oil, but I'm not really a big fan um, of the um, area in which uh, oil is trading right now because it's very volatile and it's not expanding. It's still contracting. It's still compressing. So it's not outside of parameters. So it doesn't give me a great, great chance of follow through. So I'm just going to leave it alone for now. Gold has been in a, in a sideways range for a very long time, and I didn't see a lot of uh, day trading opportunities in it. But we are in uh, a trade in uh, oil that I've exited today because I chose to, uh, instead of rolling my um position um and this is a position uh that i initiated and we initiated in my trading room in may uh so we purchased a average cost that we had uh, uh that we had oil was 76 dollars we have achieved several targets and we actually exited um at 82 dollars and 50 cents the last lot in uh, gold as well we have been in gold for some time we're up massively and uh, we have a cheap, one of our targets was 2450 and we uh, and our entry was 2360. So uh, we're making a bunch of money in that one as well. And uh, you can see that most of these commodities are more prone for swing trading where you're going to let your money work for you rather than work for your money like we're doing in the indices. But even so, I'm working the first hour when I was trading stocks, I would work uh, literally the whole entire day from the market open until the market closed. And not only that, but it required me to get up, like I said, super early and be um, here around 7 to 7.30 at the latest in front of my computer. And uh, after the day closed, so it was a full-time job for me. Um, and uh, after the close, I would still be looking uh, at uh, the trades that I took. And I would take a lot of trades I would have because I was a day trader. I would have at least eight to 10 trades every single day. I would say in, out, in, out, and several uh, stocks. Um, and uh, it, it's not easy being a stock trader. It's not very easy being a stock trader the way I was trading. So um, I literally welcomed the opportunity of being uh, just a, a power hour trader. I specialized in the power hour because uh, when I was trading stocks, I would be trading gaps a lot and I would nail the open. I would love the open so much. I would just uh, trade the open very intensely and then uh, I would let some of the trades that I had off the open uh, into the afternoon hours, uh, just uh, trade them off, add, reduce, add, reduce, and so on and so forth, or even uh, take on new positions. Uh, I don't trade uh, the doldrum period. So from 1130 till about two o'clock when I would be uh, day trading stocks, I would, uh, you know, take a break, you know, stretch, just uh, move around a little bit and come back to the desk. Um, and bottom line is that with the futures market, you're trading major markets, you're trading NASDAQ, you're trading the S&P, you're trading uh, Russell, you're trading like small caps right now, like super hot, right? They had a tremendous run to the upside, like five, six, seven consecutive days. Uh, now you have so many advantages by trading minis and micros. Like imagine, you know, when I started trading, there were no micros. So I had to literally trade the full size contract and it's big, it's hefty. You guys know that. 
Uh, one of the things that I love is that you are able to trade for income. Income trading is basically when you're in and out within the same day and you have access to your capital every single day. Uh, wealth trading is mostly like swing trading and investing. So that means that you won't have access to your capital until the trade closes. So that means that if I'm in a position, for example, in Netflix right now, uh, guess what? I'm going to be in Netflix until it achieves target. And that is when I can ha uh, have access to my profits when I'm going to be closing the trade. There are special tax advantages to the uh, to futures market, and you could actually, you know, um, go on the internet and search for a futures tax advantages. Um, be, the, like I said, there are tons, uh, and it's not my, um, you know, it, it's not my duty or obligation or to talk about the tax advantages because I'm not a CPA, uh, but there are tons of tax advantages, and this is why I'm uh, day trading it. There's no pump and dump, right? So um, if there's a rumor out there, let's say, oh my gosh, you know, like, let's say uh, Netflix had a rumor today saying that, oh my God, it lo is losing memberships and all that. And of course the stock is going to start selling, right? Especially ahead of earnings, you know, having a rumor like that. And then you have, you, you have the news coming out say, oh, that was a rumor. So there are, you know, there are things that are, um, that makes a lot more sense um, in uh, in trading, and that is the futures market. Uh, it, so it's safe from risk. There's no manipulation. There are no upgrades, there are no downgrades, right? It's fun when you are in a trade. Uh, for example, if you're in Apple, and let's say there is an analyst that's saying, okay, Bank of America, you know, is um uh is upgrading apple to a buy from a hold or whatever or you know uh it's raising the price target from let's say i don't know two hundred dollars to two hundred fifty dollars and so on and so forth another thing why i like trading the futures market is because it has a 24 hour trading window so that means that you can take advantage al almost 24 hours i'm not saying 24 hours because the market is closed right now but at six o'clock, the brand new day starts. And at six o'clock, you're going to see the brand new ticks that are going to pop in the market. And you could actually start analyzing. And you could see the effects, for example, of Netflix uh, after six o'clock, how, uh, how the price action is going to react off of the, uh, off of this. Plus, it's hands-on risk. So if I see that there's, you know, some um activity in the overnight, or if there is some kind of geopolitical event, uh, that is happening, I could take advantage of it and said, oh, okay, th there is no more war um, in Ukraine. What do you think that's going to do for a market? Maybe it's going to, you know, maybe the market is going to go higher, right? It's not going to see that as a threat. The U.S. is not going to send uh, uh, trillions of dollars anymore. So maybe that's good for the U.S. stock. So maybe the market is going to go up. So there, these are the types of things that I would look for. Now, let's talk a little bit about futures account size, right? So as you guys know, if you want to day trade stocks, you got to have a minimum requirement um, of uh, $25,000 because of the day trading pattern rule. And you have lab leverage of two to one or four to one, depending on whether you're swing trading or day trading. Now in the futures markets, you have access to, um, uh, you can open an account with uh, $5,000. Uh, don't open an account for less. And in fact, I don't even recommend in this type of market to open an account with $5,000. If you do not have at least $30,000 to open an account in the futures market, uh, I would say opt for a, um, a prop account where you have access to capital. $50,000, $100,000, $300,000. This is not a market for $5,000 um, uh, for a $5,000 uh, uh, account. It's not. I mean, you're going to blow it up. I'm going to be super honest and blunt with you guys. If you have $5,000 and if you're thinking of opening a, uh, you know, a trading account, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't, don't trade. Don't day trade. You're going to literally blow it up. Oh, if you have $5,000, I'm going to tell you what to do. Buy VOO or buy the SPX or buy something in an investing account or something that, uh, carries, uh, uh, carries, um, um, let's say, uh, uh, dividends, right? So you can compound those dividends every single time because whether the market is going up or down, you're going to earn dividends on a quarterly base or an yearly base or whatever the case may be for the stock. And you're going to be able to take that money 
And instead of pulling it out of the market and, you know, buying yourself whatever, you know, you're going to put it back and into the trading account and you're going to buy more of that stock. Okay. So that's how the rich get richer. Okay. And that's how you can become richer. But with $5,000, this is what you're going to do. All right. And you could buy slices of stocks. We could get, you could uh, open an account with Webull and I don't know, buy, uh, uh, buy shares of Broadcom. Broadcom pays like $6 and 50 cents or something uh, dividend per quarter. So yeah, buy that and leave it in your account for investing, for investing. That means that you're not going to touch it for two years. Okay. Or until you hit some, some sort of target. All right. Uh, let me show you what uh, Netflix did uh, in the past. So for example, in this case, we have Netflix momentum uh, that went lower. Uh, as you can see, it reported and this is the overnight uh, overnight price action. So it meandered and uh, right off the open, the volatility came in and bam, it smashed the stock really, really hard. So what do you think it did to NASDAQ stock? Uh, NASDAQ was actually positive. It was going on its merry way and was hovering into the heights. It was literally, literally ready for breakout and bam. It starts crashing higher. Uh, Vita, you have a lot more, uh, a lot more um, tax benefits in Europe than you have here in the U.S. If you're trading uh, futures, uh, earnings in IBM, for example, IBM is another mega player. I think IBM is going to be reporting next week. Um, we have to look and check when it reports, but I believe it's going to be next week. It's almost in the, it's actually the first batch of companies that are reporting. The Dow companies are always reporting first. And you can see here the momentum. So it reported earnings before the market opened and uh, the price went skyrocketing higher. And you can see here that the price actually went higher. My favorite momentum trades are definitely and to trade uh, to trade these earnings are going to be guess when? in the morning okay in the morning first thing in the morning all right so economic indicators are the main driver of price action um in the pre-market trading session the majority of economic releases are issued at about 8 30 and that is an hour before the new york trading session open so market reaction to the data can cause a substantial price moves and set the trading tone for the day. So pay attention to that as well. Don't think that, oh my gosh, I'm just going to trade earnings. I'm just going to look at Netflix. I'm just going to look at Nasdaq. No, pay attention to news as well. I typically don't trade news, or I should say I don't trade news like in blank. Uh, we trade the reaction from the news like 99% of the time. That's what I do. But lately, I've noticed that there are some really massive opportunities into the CPI numbers and PPI numbers. And I have been opening the room early so we can take advantage of that. Uh, but again, you don't need to interpret the numbers. So don't work yourself crazy over this because you don't need to understand how earnings work. Uh, you're not an analyst. You don't work on Wall Street. You just need the reaction. And of course, this, uh, it goes the same with the news. Now, Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, and Google, also known as the FANG stocks, right? The, remember, they were very popular about two years ago, right? And they have great potential to move your portfolio. But they're, you know, they were, and they still are in part very expensive, right? So if you're looking at, uh, for example, uh, Netflix, right? You have Netflix is $643 a share. So that would make it like if you have a small account, you go like, what am I going to do? Just buy one share of Netflix? You're not going to make anything with one share, right? Um, five shares make a whole lot of difference, but uh, one share, no. So NASDAQ 100 is a great way to access top tech uh, market opportunities. The capital efficiency of the futures market can translate to significant, earning, uh, significant sa savings. And definitely could take advantage of the 24-hour futures access. You can analyze and everything. You can sync your FANGs into the uh, NASDAQ 100 futures. And not only that, guys, but uh, what was very popular last year, what was very popular and everybody was talking about, and these stocks like went ballistic, ballistic, Meta, Amazon, Apple, Google, NVIDIA, Tesla, Microsoft, these are the Magnificent Seven. Everybody was talking about these stocks until Tesla. Tesla in a range for such a long time. Tesla still down on the year, right? Microsoft is higher. Google's higher. NVIDIA is blasting, right? For investing purposes, NVIDIA, yes. Get those $5,000, buy some NVIDIA stock. 
leave it in your account, okay? All right, so these are going to provide really huge swings. Now, for you to understand, these are some market miners that are from my uh, platform. These are I actually trade on Schwab platform, former um, TD Ameritrade. Uh, and this is the Thinkorswim platform that I trade on. So you can see here that we have uh, three, uh, four windows. We have the Dow, we have the S&P, we have Nasdaq, and we have Russell. Now, think about this. When you're trading the Dow, right, you're trading YM, right? Or you're trading what? What are you trading, actually? You're trading the power players within, right? So, for example, if you have financials that are down, if you have UNHs that are down, what, what do you think the Dow is going to do? Move south. Now, you're playing the S&P 500. S&P is really rich in financials and it's very rich in energy stocks. So if energy, if crude oil, if energy stocks are going to be like super, 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 super um, um, uh, bullish and you're having a super strong financial market, what do you think the S&P is going to do? It's going to move up. Now, NASDAQ. What if Google, Amazon, and Netflix, and Meta, what if they start moving down? Where do you think NASDAQ is going to go? NASDAQ is going to move south. And once NASDAQ is the, uh, NASDAQ is very sensitive to these tech stocks. And once you see these tech stocks just curling down a little bit lower, NASDAQ is going to move lower with it. And oftentimes, you're going to see a divergence. You're going to see very strong doubt, like we've seen throughout this week. And very weak NASDAQ. It's very normal to have this divergency because you're having very strong uh, Dow stocks and very weak NASDAQ stocks. So this is what's influencing. And of course, uh, small caps are on fire. They were on fire uh, this week and last week as well. We saw some massive moves happen in Russell. And that's why Russell was moving higher because the majority of stocks within the majority of small caps were having a really good time and moving higher. So this is basically how you can sink your stocks or your stock or your earning stock into your uh, index, right? So for example, tomorrow we have Netflix, right? Look at Netflix and put it side by side with NASDAQ. When Boeing is going to report earnings, what are you going to do? You're going to take Boeing and the Dow. When, let's say you're going to have Amazon uh, that is going to report earnings, what are you going to do? Are you going to take trade the S&P or are you going to trade the Dow? You're going to trade NASDAQ, right? So always have them in sync and see what where the power, power players are. So for example, some of the largest companies on the stock market are about to release their earnings reports and you need to be here. You need to be here and capture some of that momentum. Um, all right, so bottom line, what do you need to do? Okay, first of all, you're going to check the earnings. Like I said before, Earnings only happen before the market opens and after the market closes, right? And check the historical times to the release report. You could just simply Google it and uh, do a search. And uh, oftentimes you're going to have the, uh, the exact time because they usually report at or around the same time, every single time. You got to trace your levels, right? You got to trace your support resistance levels, what you know, what you have learned, and pre plan your trade, right? Just like I did with my bullish above, bearish below, do your multi time frame analysis, find the confluence areas, find the, find the inflection points, and that is where you're going to have your, um, your levels from. Uh, now, trade NASDAQ if NASDAQ stocks report, trade the Dow if you have Dow stocks that are reporting, and so on. Now, uh, how do, what are the best times to execute these trades? What are the best times? Okay. Now, when companies report before the market open, and this is my favorite time, you could do it at the open. Okay. You could do it at the open and trade the power hour, right? So tomorrow, the first thing that we're going to be doing in the, uh, in the room is that we're going to be focusing on NASDAQ to see a possible reaction off of Netflix earnings. But we also have American Express and some regional banks. So that means that we're also going to have the Dow in focus and also the S&P because it's financial rich, right? Like we have like three or four or five regional banks and we have American Express, right? So that brings a great, no a great number of financial institutions that are going to report. 
Uh, you could also watch companies after the market closes, right? And you could watch the futures after market closes. For example, Netflix reported after the market closed, right? So what is the best time to watch for a movement in these uh, indices? After 9 to 10 o'clock. After 9 to 10 o'clock, they get a lot more traction. Don't even look at the market between 6 o'clock and 9 o'clock. At nine o'clock, there's this is the very important fl inflection time that things start moving a little bit. So, um, if for example Netflix is going to move higher, uh, let's say um, in uh, let's say until seven p.m. right, then you're going to see uh, you're going to see the uh, you're going to see Nasdaq that is going to move a little bit higher. Okay, so how to prepare? Uh, need to know when certain stocks of interest report to have a good understanding of prior earnings behavior, right? Because there are stocks that always beat, right? Beat, 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 beat. Can somebody name one of these stocks? Can somebody say one of these stocks? What, what is a stock that literally always beats lately? Like, or a sector. Give me a sector. Semiconductors, right? Semiconductors. Uh, then you're going to determine your key levels and plot your trade. Okay, Amazon, Charles, exactly. Tammy's asking, which source do you find the earnings reports and schedule? I love to go and on um, uh, earnings whisper. Earnings whisper. Okay, that is, that is my favorite source. Okay, and that's my preferred source. All right, so let's take a look at this, for example. Okay, so this is Netflix, reported earnings, you know, this is a different time that reported earnings and bam, you can see that always reporting after the market closes. So nothing changed, right? Netflix is Netflix. And once you learn, and you don't even have to remember a lot of stocks, right? Just remember a few stocks like Apple, Meta, you know, the big ones, Microsoft, that's it. You don't need to remember 6,000 stocks, just 10 or 20. Okay, thank you so much, Jessica. Yes, this is the site that I go to earningswhisper.com. Earnings Whisper. That is where uh that is where I get my earnings data. I I just uh I think that it's a great website and they have a lot of information. So um and it's free. So use all the free information. I'm all for free information, right? Uh so look at this. Breakout, massive move to the upside, just blasted higher. Now, what happened over here? The futures market obviously, you know, closed and it's very low volume until about nine o'clock. And then after nine o'clock, it started to grind a little bit higher and as was as it was getting ready for the open, take a look at the ascent that it had in the New York trading session, right? So yes, it's going to impact the index, okay? okay? Here's another time, Netflix. This is another report, right? And we're talking about Netflix because, you know, I have several examples of Netflix. Netflix was scheduled for today. That's the reason. And in this example, you can see that it breached the level and started plummeting, right? So what do you think that, uh, what do you think NASDAQ did? Bam. All right. So we actually shorted this. I had a coaching session and we shorted this at 7360. We had the stop here, 7380. We had these two targets hit. We risked 20 points. Uh, and uh, that is about $400 per contract risk. Uh, and we got about 35 points out of it. That's $700 per contract. Duration, about 15 minutes. This is how you can trade it at the open. So that's really fast, fast money. Now, I was telling you that there are some times when you get the big power plays that are reporting, right? You have Google, Amazon, and Microsoft. Most of the time that report together and they report after the market closes, this is going to have a huge, massive impact on that stock because if all three are going to be in sync and if all three are going to beat expectation, uh, what do you think is going to happen with, with NASDAQ? You're going to get a big momentum higher, stock it in the overnight, load up and carry it higher. And it's just going to move higher uh, in the overnight because these these are three massive power players. These are billions, billions, billions of dollars into the market. Now, there are days like today, but by the way, and throughout this week where we had massively divergent markets, we have very strong Dow and we have very weak NASDAQ. And take a look at here. All right, so here we have a very strong Dow because Walmart reported earnings, another power player in the Dow, right? Another big presence in the Dow. And then on the same day, guys, this is the same day. 
So earnings in Walmart came out, Walmart skyrocketing, and then a YM just blasting higher. NASDAQ, guess what? NASDAQ is moving lower. Why? Because Apple moving lower, right? Apple disappointed, right? So NASDAQ dealt with it, right? Because it's part of the same family, part of the NASDAQ family. But look at the correlation. There is actually correlated move between Walmart and the Dow and um, divergent move when we're talking about these two indices, right? Because when you're thinking about the market, the overall market, the market doesn't always, it's not always in sync and you're seeing like up, 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 right? Or down, down, down. No, you're seeing like bullish Dow, weak YM, sideways, uh, sideways ES. All right, so let's roll our sleeves and let's see what we need. We need to determine the trend and determine the directional bias, right? We need to plot out support resistance areas. We need the time frames to be in sync. So for example, if you're looking to trade the five minute chart, you need to, and don't go to a two minute or a one minute, go five minute or 15 minute or higher if you wanna trade uh, earnings through futures. Um, also um, plot the entry, the stop, the target, and the risk level all allocated for this, right? So you have the entry minus the stop, that's the risk. And according to that risk, you need to position size. There's no such thing as, oh my gosh, you're trading, uh, you know, like a standard size account. For example, I have, let's say I have a $50,000 account and I'm trading four standard contracts in and out, in and out, in and out, five, 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 no, ma no matter what the risk is, no matter where the entry is or where the stop is, I'm just putting five contracts. I don't care about, sometimes you may have a 20 point stop. Sometimes you're going to have a 200 point stop. Imagine how much of a loss you're going to have when you're going to be trading five contracts with um, with a 100-point stop and when you're trading five contracts with a 20-point stop. So stop doing that right now. If you don't know how to position size, leave everything aside, shutter your computer, everything. Just search how it's done. You're pretty sure you can find literature on the internet and see how it's done before you actually trade, trade the next day. Okay, so that is the number one thing that you need to learn in futures first uh, and in stock trading. Uh, try to determine the entry based on the chart time frame. Like I said, that's really important to find your entry based on your strategy. So don't just hop in or jump in. That's not a strategy. Place your stops. Always don't use standard size and say, oh, I, I'm using like a, a five point stop and everything or I'm using a three point stop and everything. That is baloney, junk. That is just stupid, okay? Just make sure that you place your stops according to the technical pattern. That is the only thing that is gonna dictate where your stop is gonna be. It's gonna be under a pivot or above a pivot, period. Okay, so that makes it so super simple because you don't even have to think about it. Um, wait for the trigger, don't just get in. If you have your entry here, you know, for example, over a rotation, just place your entry. And don't just cheat on it and say, oh, but if I enter here, I'm going to have like a tighter stop. It's never going to work. It's always going to work against you because you're not waiting for the confirmation in price. Uh, and also have a trailing method ready to apply because if uh, that, that and this is actually one of the most important things aside from um, risk management and from position sizing. Because if you are in a trade and if you have certain targets that you need to meet, you know, you have to know exactly where, how you're going to behave at certain targets. Okay. So are you going to scale some? When are you going to take all your money? Like a lot of times, you know, traders that are very new to trading, they see that they're up a little bit and they, uh, they're they exiting the trade. So they're not trailing. Make sure that you apply a good trailing uh, methodology. So knowing all this is definitely um, peace of mind. So some advantages to futures, like I say, you don't need to have a big account. You actually can uh, trade prop. You have access to uh, prop accounts right now. Like there's no tomorrow. There are like gazillion of companies out there. You have lower commissions, tax advantages, good volume, et cetera. So how many trades should you be taking a day? And that's in general. It's not necessarily just for earnings, right? One, two, three one to three trades or if you decide you know and that's for the first hour if you decide to trade within the first two hours then i would increase that to four to five trades uh position size so important best time to take trades i love to take them between 9 30 and 10 30 and within the first hour so 
you're going to ask me why one, two, three trades day as a day trader. Okay. Because each day you're going to need to fight. In some days you don't have to fight, but in some days you have to fight. So for example, if you take a first trade in the morning, guess what? And if you have a loss, you got to fight yourself back out of that hole. And if you're using position sizing with the R system, right? Guess what? You're going to be out of that hole in no time. But if you're not, and if you're using a standard uh, lot size, for example, say, oh, I'm just trading with one contract. Are you kidding me? How can you compare a 20 point stop in the Dow with, with one contract? And what if you have a, a hundred point stop? Oh no, I'm going to take myself out. Then why bother trading? Just stop what you're doing right now. If you're trading like that, just, just stop trading, open an investing account, put that money in an investing account and stop worrying about it. Okay. You're going to make money anyways, <laughs> but day trading is not your style. Okay. Day trading is not your style. So why the same risk amount? Let's say this, I'm going to tell you this. What if you have a trade and first of all, let's say I'm using $500 risk on a trade or $300 like in this example. Okay. So bottom line is that I have $300 that I'm allocating for each trade. And let's say I have a budget of, I don't know, $1,500 so I can, you know, have $1,500 a day uh, as a budget. So, or let's say I have $900 and let's say I have only, I'm taking only three trades a day. So I have $900 budget on the day and I divide that into three and that gives me $300 risk per trade. So that means that I'm going to take the first trade. What happens? Oh, I don't know. If something happened, boom, 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 I'm out. So I stopped out. What happens if the second trade comes in and I stop out? Well, I stopped out. That's the case, right? But if I'm applying the proper risk management and the proper position sizing, and if I get into my third trade, it is very easy for me to come back from that trade because it's very easy because if that trade goes two hours up, that means two uh, reward units up. That means that I have made up my $600. But if I'm using a standard one contract, it's probably going to take you like seven trades to get out of that first trade or the second trade, depending on the size of the stop. And especially with this volatility, I see a lot of traders that are getting killed that are coming to me and say, oh, my God, I don't know what I'm doing. Is this not enough? It's like, do you position size? What is position sizing? Well, uh-huh. OK, so that's why. So stop what you're doing right now. This is one of the most essential things to do. Overnight price action is going to show you. So that's why it's so important to analyze it, especially now in earnings season ahead of the earnings reports that are coming in the morning to analyze key levels, ranges, direction and trend, pullback, buy and sell zones or breakout areas and map out the entries associated with risk and with targets. My advice, no one has a crystal ball. And what seems certain one moment can change in the next. And our job is to find these low risk setups and manage the risk and assess the market. So for example, tomorrow is option expiration. How many of you guys in here really want to trade tomorrow? Just type a one in the room if you intend on trading tomorrow. And if you have a really good plan on trading tomorrow. Okay, you plan on trading tomorrow. Do you guys know what you're doing? You guys have like a really good plan? Know what you're doing tomorrow? Do you guys know what tomorrow is? Aside from Friday? Is option expiration day. Okay, do you guys know what an option expiration day is? It's when stocks expire. This is going to have a huge impact on the price. On price. Extremely volatile. What happens in option expiration is that setups 90% of the time don't work. 90% of the time don't work. 90. Um, you get failed buys and failed sales, right? So what happens is that you're going to get triggered in, you're going to stop out. You're going to get triggered in long or short, you're going to stop out both ways because of the price gyration, OK, you got to have there are very few times where I have seen really feasible trading environment within this. you got to have a really good plan. And when you're seeing lower risk, you need to know what is what does lower risk mean to me? What does a lower risk mean to me? OK, does that mean like I'm not I'm not willing to to uh, lose on more than three trades? 
or I'm willing to give it a shot. And I'm not a believer in, I'm going to take just one trade to see how the market is. Because if the market, for example, uh, and if you're trading and say, I have a first trade that is a loss, okay? And your goal, you have that bitter taste and you're like, oh my God, I, I just, you know, uh, I just had a loss, okay? So continue to watch the market. And if you have a second opportunity, go after it. Try to see if you can make your money back, but only if you have a great trading opportunity. Don't go into a revenge mode because revenge mode is not good. Go only if you see the proper setup that is happening in the market, okay? So trading is a very, and position size. So for example, if your R is, let's say $300, the example that I've used before, your R right now should be $150, okay? Should be $150 and you position size for that. All right, so you cannot learn how to trade from a DVD or for a book because when you're gonna be confronted with the real action in the market, you're gonna go like, oh my gosh, everything that I learned from the book or from the DVD doesn't make any sense. I, you know, been, you know, um, I, I took so many trading courses and I understood that I, I'm a visual person. So I needed somebody to tell me, you know, how it's done. And plus I hired someone to teach me fast how to trade because I didn't want to do trial and error thing because I needed money fast. So I needed to collapse time frames. I didn't want to spend five years. I wanted to spend, let's say, two months in order to get on track. And this is what helped me. Um, you need somebody that is there for you because if you, for example, and trust me, like the authors, I, I have nothing against the authors, but if you have time to write a book, when are you trading? <laughs> you know what I mean? And if you want to get in touch with the person that authored the book, I mean, there are very, very, very few people that trade and actually have a book out. Very few people, very few people. I actually know a few, okay? I can't tell you that they're extraordinary. It's a lot of talk and very little action. I haven't seen any portfolios, right? I haven't seen any portfolios, to be very honest. It's all talk, but they, you know, they put some ideas out there. Um, when you trade, think about this, who you are trading with or against, and think about the massive flow into the market and the institutional power. Don't go against the institutional power. So if you want to be successful, you need to live and breathe day trading, okay? If not, there's a separate option for you, okay? If you don't feel that, and if you feel that this is too intense, this income generating style is too intense for you, and I fully understand it's super intense, and it has been super intense lately, uh, but if you feel you don't have the, you know, what it takes uh, to be a day trader, you can be the perfect swing trader. It doesn't mean that you have to give up. Never give up because there is so much money to be made into the market. It requires dedication, patience, effort, and passion. And don't, don't give up, okay? And don't forget, this is not a, a rich, a get rich quick scheme. Uh, so the Power Rank and Futures course, um, we do teach traders how to trade. Uh, I have been doing this since 2015, fall of 2015. Like I said, from 2014, I had started trading futures. And a lot of my friends were going like, but well, how do you do it? Uh, what are you looking at? Uh, and Because I was sharing charts and, you know, we were talking because we're, you know, quite a group of people that we have been uh, trading way before, way before social media, way before any kind of chat rooms, okay? So we were just, you know, exchanging ideas and so on and so forth. So they were very interested in what I'm doing because they want to incorporate it into their trading style because I have switched from trading all day to just trading into the first hour. And actually, to be very honest, I was literally trading even less than an hour a day. Now, because I run a trading room, I have it open from nine o'clock to 1130, right? But when I was trading alone, I'm, I'm like, I wouldn't stay in front of the computer. I finally found the freedom for myself and I would be trading higher time frames, this and that. I was trading 15 minutes or an hour or 30 minutes and that's what I would be doing. 
I would be, you know, sipping coffee, going to, you know, coming back to the computer. And then, you know, people started, you know, getting very interested. And I'm like, can you teach us how to do it? And I'm like, I don't, I, I don't know. Like, I, I don't have anything ready. Like, I'm not prepared to teach you like from A to Z. I don't have anything organized to teach people how to trade. But I came up with a course and the course just get, became bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Now it's about 700 pages. So if I were to publish a book, you can imagine it would be like probably over 2000 pages. OK, because that's only the manual. OK, um, so what we do is we teach traders how to uh, trade stress free. Uh, we provide institutional levels, uh, how to trace institutional levels, how to determine precise buy and sell zones. Um, management and risk management. This is actually what, uh, you know, we start with well, m m money management um high ads pattern setups how and where to play stops so you're not going to get stopped out as often uh we teach you damage control we teach you training psychology technical analysis a to z you won't need another book you won't need another just my style of trading you see the track performance on our website since i started the trading room and since i started as well, the um, the stock swing trader program. So you can see the result. I, I mean, since 2010, going back to 2010. Um, so we teach you something that a lot of people don't and a lot of educators don't. And that is how to put the puzzle together. And think about this. If you're too broke to invest in yourself, get used to staying that way because you have to invest in yourself in order to propel higher. Investing in yourself, it means that you're going to take some money out. It's just like the bow and arrow, right? You're first pulling that um, uh, arrow in, right? Because you're investing in yourself and then boom, you're propelling higher. So we provide the right tools you can use to fast track your trading. Uh, we teach you everything from A to Z, live assisted and guided trading every single day you can trade with us. So very few traders know that if you need to reach consistency, you need to have two things. You need to have great education, an education where you're going to say like, wow, my mind is blown. Like this is exactly what I needed. And you have to have a great support system, right? You need to have somebody that you can call, you can talk, you can chat, you can email and say, hey, I don't get this thing. All right. Um, so bottom line is that you need to understand and ask yourself, what kind of trader are you? And by the way, I'm going to answer all the questions. Uh, it's just that we're going to do the wrap up right now. And then I'm going to go question, straight to questions. So don't think I'm ignoring you. Okay. All right. So what kind of a trader are you? Are you a welfare trader? What is a welfare trader? Is a trader not successful? Is the eternal student never committing? Okay. Never committing. It's like, oh, you know what? Yes, I want to trade futures, but I don't have the proper education. I want to trade futures, but I'm going to jump from trading room to trading room and from style to style. That trader is using this. That trader is using that. What is the common denominator? The most important thing when you're following someone and say, hey, what is the track performance? I mean, results speak. And if you don't see track performance for someone, right, then guess what? then guess what? That person is literally not a trader. I have seen trading rooms in my lifetime where they say, we don't trade. We just teach you how to trade. And I'm like, oh, okay. Then, um, so they're not making money trading, but they're making money off teaching people how to trade. But are they successful? You know what I mean? So it's, be very, very careful, guys. Be very careful because there are so many out there that so many companies out there that are marketing companies. Some of them are really big com marketing companies, you know, and some of them, I mean, be very careful. I'm not giving any names or anything. I have nothing, you know, uh, against them. You know, that's how they're earning their money, what, whatever, but Anyway, so it's the welfare trader and the millionaire mindset, the successful trader, trader that invests in himself, 
right? Invest in the education, is always interested, and starts on the right foot. Not, oh my God, today I'm going to try this, tomorrow I'm going to try the other thing. And five years later, you don't have any money left. You're going to a prop account and you still don't know how to trade. So what if I told you that you can invest in yourself? It's basically about $16.43 a day for a year. How many times do you go to market and spend more than $100 on God knows what, right? You go to Costco, you go like, yeah, I'm going to get this, this, and that. And you actually fly out of there with the full cart many, many, many times. So I'm, we're just going to go through some, uh, I'm not even going to go through some, um, of these uh, testimonials. In fact, I think the best testimonial, if you're committed, come to a trading, uh, come to our trading room for one day or for one week, test us out, see, see what it's all about and then commit. Right. And then you can talk to people that have been trading with me for years and we're there. We're basically a family right now. We're actually friends. Right. Um, so what I'm trying to say is that if you want to generate six to seven figure income in 2024, or just learn how to trade, you need to start making some decisions. Take the decision to stop procrastinating, right? Uh, you need to follow somebody that is already doing it. That's what I did when I learned, uh, when I wanted to learn how to trade. I gave up my job, boom, and I wanted, I dove into day trading. I didn't dive into day trading until I took two courses. And that were very expensive. I traveled to New York and I took two courses, okay? And then I continued my education, okay? Be wired for success mentally. Follow that person long enough to steal all the secrets and develop your own system. And it's not like reinvent, like I still trade the same system that my mentor did, but I just tweaked it a little bit. That's what I mean by that. Stop procrastinating. Procrastination is the assassination of the motivation that will stop you from reaching your destination. So we do have the Power Income Futures course, which is one of the most popular with Trade Out Loud. And this program is for you if you're losing money in the market, if you don't have a system, if you're stopping out, and if you're miserable, if you feel like crying when you're trading, uh, if you do not have a thought process that eliminates emotions and noise, if you lack confidence, this course is going to change your life. I'm not the one that is telling you this. It's the people that took, the students that took the course. We're going to teach you, like I said, everything from A to Z. It's a system that will teach you when, where, and what. That means when to buy, where to place entry stops targets, what to trade, right? Now, in this workshop today, I pretty much gave you an idea within the first six weeks where we're going to be focusing about, uh, we're focusing on. But think about it. There's one more month, right? After that, what are you going to do after? What are you, do, what are you doing, uh, doing in a slow time? We're going to teach you advanced money man risk money management, how to protect and grow your capital to increase your buying power efficiency, advanced technical analysis, so you can foresee the buys and the sells before they occur. So I know five minutes or two minutes before the trigger point happens. I'm not just seeing the candle right now. I'm like, oh, let's get in, right? No, everything is pre-calculated and it's literally technical. So it takes all the edge out, the emotions out, because you're not, once you know your position sizing and once you know your strategy, and once you know technical analysis, you're in the zone. You're trading stress-free, okay? And by the way, if you're stressed right now and if you feel like, oh my God, I'm in the trade, what am I going to do? Your way, your position is way bigger than you can afford, seriously. So winning mindset, who is ready to learn, earn, and join me on this amazing journey? The power is in your hands. It's up to you to change your life towards financial freedoms with just trading a few minutes a day. Literally, we have the course that is coming up live in September, but there is um, uh, there's a juicy bonus that we're going to be offering you. And uh, this course is going to be five day live, September 23rd through the 27th. It's going to be live with me. It's voted the best in the industry by Benzinga. Uh, we won the award in 2021 for the best financial literacy tool from 200 companies. That's right. We won first prize. So how much money did you lose this year? Just, just be very honest. 
be very honest. You don't have to answer to me. Just answer to yourself. You need to be honest with yourself. You know, draw the line and say, how much money did I lose this year? Um, what is your account thing about you? When you look at your account, does it reflect what you wanted to be, where you wanted to be at, right? So what are you getting with our course, right? It's a five-day life course, okay? Five-day life course. You have lifetime access to the Power Income Futures Trading uh, Trading Course live where we take you from zero to hero, from student to pro trader. So each time we teach it once a quarter, every single time when we teach it live, you're going to be able to take it plus come in the next quarter and the next quarter and the next quarter and the next quarter. So you're going to have live access to this course forever, lifetime. You're going to receive the e-manual. Like I said, it's not 500 pages. It's actually because we've improved it since I made this slide. So it's actually 600. It's close to 700 pages. You get a limited live retakes of what I've just seen. Not only that, but guys, you get the recordings. Yours to keep without any time limit. So I'm not going to come to your home and say with an email and say, hey, knock, knock. Uh, your recordings are going to expire. Boom, boom, they vanished, right? And you lost your all your investment because maybe your kids are going to want to take the course. Maybe your grandkids are going to want to take the course, right? So this gives them the possibility. This, this, this is the gift that your family needs right now, right? So you get the recordings. You get 30 days access to the Futures Trading Room uh, where literally I hold you by the hand with all the trades. Like I tell you where I'm entering ahead of time. I'm telling you where I'm placing my stop ahead of time. I'm telling you when the targets are, when I post the trade, when I call the trade on the mic, I explain to you the reason why I'm taking the trade, the context of the market every single day. You get access to private Twitter feed. If there is something happening, Geopolitically wise, you're going to find it there. If there is an urgent update on one of our swing trades, you're going to find about it there. You get the platform layout so you don't have to reinvent the wheel because a lot of times traders um, fail because they don't have a good layout. They don't know how to look at their charts. So this is an essential part of success. You're also getting a personal <clears throat> student personal support. Whether you want to call me, whether we, we, we you want to meet on Zoom or Skype or whatever it is, you have access to me. So who does that? So you take a course, you go to a big box, a big box company, you take us up, uh, uh, you take a course you and you call them and say, hey, I, I want to talk to the instructor. Say what? <laughs> I mean, like, hello, like, why? <laughs> like, no way, no way, no way you can get a hold of anybody. Um, you get your risk sheet. You know why? So you can be in control of your trades. So what is a risk sheet? Does, it, does anybody know what a risk sheet is? What position sizing is? Position sizing is. So what you're going to have is access to a performance portfolio. We actually give access to this to all the members in the trading room. So I'm just going to give you a quick glimpse of what that is right now this is it right here okay this is literally priceless right here what i'm showing you right now is literally the keys to success so we have a tracker of all the trades but that's not you know that's not the point so you can see january february march whatever okay you have your my personal so i'm showing you my i'm putting my money where my mouth is so it's like you're gonna see like how many trades i took according to this right so you're going to see here on this day, March 1st, you know, I took so many trades and you can see here March 1st. Oh, did she take those trades? Okay, here it is. One trade on the first. Okay, and you're going to see all my losing days and how much money I made from my personal account. I mean, hello, my personal account. I put my money where my mouth is. And not only that, but you're going to get insight into risk management. This is the most important piece of information. This is the piece that nobody talks about. Right. So I give you access to this risk calculator and according to your size, to your account size, let's say you have a $50,000 account size. 
Oh, this is view only. Uh, let's say, let's say, you know, you have a prop account, you have access to a $500,000 account. I don't trade prop, by the way, this is my own account that I trade uh, that you guys see in the sheet right here. Okay, here it is. This is my own account. It's not prop. Uh, but let's say your risk per trade is $5,000 on a trade. Let's say you're, uh, you have a 10 point stop, let's say in a NASDAQ. That tells you that you could take the trade with 25 contracts. You got it. This is the key. This is the holy grail. Okay. This is literally the holy grail. That is priceless. That is present. Only for this piece of information for the risk management piece, this is worth $5,000 alone to, to teach you how to do this and why to do this. This is alone. For, this is going to literally make you stop the bleeding from your account, whether you're trading futures or stocks or whatever you're doing. Okay. Um, all right. So total value of the pack package is over $26,000. This is $5,999. If I add everything that we're going to teach you guys, it's going to be mind blowing. So we teach you from risk management to trading psychology, to, uh, journaling, uh, to, um, uh, candlesticks, candlesticks, patterns, uh, um, divergence, everything under the sun, everything that you need is the most comprehensive course. There is nobody on the market that has, and I look around because I want to see what other, uh, what other, uh, educators are offering. They're not even offering 25% of what we're offering. And they have exorbitant prices of $20,000 of something that comes like maybe like 30% of what we're offering. Seriously, seriously. So bottom line is that if you want to get, uh, you know, if you want to get started with us and uh, you could go to this page that I'm going to post right here for you guys. That's the direct page. Just give me one second here. All right. And then, okay, here it is. And by the end of the year, if you join us, for this September, uh, we're going to offer everybody that came uh, that came and took this course in September access to the Future Swing Trading Course. That's right. Access to the Future Swing Trading Course, which is $5,000. Seriously, <clears throat> we're going to give that away uh, for you guys just for signing up early bird for this one. So this is the biggest... Uh, 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 let's say the biggest incentive, okay, that we currently have right now, okay? And um, all right, so let's see where we had that. Okay, so email us now and we'll send you some extra juicy bonuses. In fact, this is the extra juicy bonus that I was talking about. And if you're interested, I do have one other bonus that is also incredible, incredible but you have to email me for that so uh i'm gonna take some questions right now uh and then we're gonna call it a wrap <laughs> okay um <clears throat> uh thank you so much jennifer i appreciate it all right Thank you, Dennis. I appreciate it. If you uh, really want to uh, uh, trade like a, a real pro, Anka's the real deal. Come into her trading room and see. Exactly. Come into the trading room. Uh, it's all I could say. Come into the trading room. Check us out. And, you know, you're going to see. You're going to fall in love. We all. The, by the way, we have like, uh, I would say, a 95% retain, retention rate. So everybody that joins our trading room, joins the trading room that takes the course and then stays with us uh, because we trade together. Uh, Barbara, do you include volume profile and VWAP? I don't trade volume profile and VWAP. It's not working uh, for me. Uh, it takes uh, a lot of time to learn how it's done. I know how to do it. Not working that well in this uh, dynamic market. And um, also, uh, the when does the course start? The course live September 23rd to 27th. It's a whole week, a whole week. <laughs> Thanks, Francie. Thanks so much. Let's see if I have any questions. Um, Odell, one quick question if you have time. What is the symbol of micro Russia? Oh, uh, thanks so much. Olga already mentioned is M2K. M2K. And if you're in the trading room, we can talk about it because I know, I think I know you're in the trading room. 
Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Um, all right. Some of the questions. Oh, guys, thank you so much for helping. You've got such an amazing family. You can imagine our trading room is just so amazing. You have a question. You have probably five or six members that are popping to um, answer questions. Uh, Mel, when you call out the trades uh, on uh, when you call on the trades on the micros, do they directly correlate to their uh, on the minis? Do they correlate to the micros? I give you a tip on how to trade the micros as well. And you get that with the welcome email. Awesome. Awesome, Odell. Awesome. All right, guys, this is a wrap. The session was recorded. And uh, uh, if you want to review it, feel free to review it. We will be sending out the recording tomorrow morning. So I really hope you guys are going to have a great day tomorrow. Remember, it's option expiration. Reduce your size or take the day off. It's a great time to run errands and not spend time in front of the market. There are other 250 days a year where you can trade. Uh, tomorrow is not going to be one that is going to be very favorable for us day traders, but we'll not, we'll see tomorrow how the day is. So thanks so much, everybody. I hope you guys are going to have a great weekend. Thank you for spending so much time with me. And uh, I'll see you guys very, very soon. And don't forget, email me if you want to hear about the extra juicy bonuses that we're going to be offering. And by the way, everybody that has previously enrolled into the course before uh, September uh, is going to have access to all the perks and swing trading and courses and all that fun stuff uh, by the end of the year. So uh, we're working on a system to put everything together on a page to have access to so you guys can have access to this whenever you want to um, uh, you want to have it available. Uh, are all Fridays option expiration days? That's a great question, Mel. No, it's actually the third Friday of each month. That is the option expiration third Monday of each month. So you could actually have a day off every single month, a short trading week. Trust me. And especially if you're new to trading, take the day off and then come back at the end of the day and observe price action. Very few days that are really tradable. Also, keep in mind the quadruple reaching option expiration. That is the doozy that is happening the last Friday of the quarter. Okay. All right. All right. Any other questions? Okay, perfect. Thank you so much, everybody. I really appreciate your presence tonight. It was an outstanding night. Thank you for all the great questions. I really appreciate it. So the replay is going to come out tomorrow morning. Thanks so much, everybody. See you next time and see you in class and in the trading room. Thanks, everybody.